Whoa there, just so you know, this review's got some spoilers, so if you ain't seen this movie, uh, get out of here. Well, it's been a hot minute since I made a negative review on this channel, and believe me, this is not the film I want to say bad things about. But alas, the corporate Disney slop machine has turned out another product for the masses to consume. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny is the fifth installment of the Indiana Jones franchise, a franchise Harrison Ford is still clearly more fond of than Star Wars, which considering how terribly Disney fucked up that franchise as well is honestly fair. Very delicate. A long time. Yeah. So I have a sharp. <laughs> It'll probably be the last time we'll see the guy in this role for good, and he knows it as much as we do because he does put in the usual great performance as a titular character. I do like the idea of an older, grumpy indie going on his adventure, despite them kind of doing this concept with Crystal Skull in a, in a way, which I can say to all the haters of that movie that this new one may have taken the place as being the worst film. In the franchise. I will start off this review with some positives. Obviously I've already mentioned I think Ford did great in the movie but what was really enjoyable was the opening scene. We see a de-aged Harrison Ford which oddly enough looked decent in the very first shot it was shown in however literally every time after it looked significantly worse and worse. I swear to god the man looked like he was in the Polar Express with every preceding scene. The rest of that scene though gives us some pretty exciting action. I mean seeing Indy beating the shit out of Nazis is always a joy to see and honestly whatever happens to Indy and the guy he's with in this scene after would have been a much more interesting plot with what we got that's for sure. What we get instead is for the most part pretty bland. There's some action scenes that are kind of okay at some point in the middle half I liked the contrast of Indy being on a horse next to the in-universe current time. It shows he's still living in this traditionalist lifestyle although that's the only interesting part of the middle part of this movie as it's the weakest part of the movie by far, but I'm getting ahead of myself. This film unfortunately falls into the current franchise trap trend of having a fresh new female character take up the role of the legacy character while making said legacy character look inferior and stupid. Wow. Phoebe Waller-Bridge's character is genuinely awful in this movie. Now this isn't her fault at all of course, I'm sure she's a fine actress. I haven't seen Fleabag, but I know how revered it is by many people, so clearly the woman has talent. But my my god, the character she plays in this movie is terrible. She's extremely obnoxious and arrogant and she's not even really a character. Jax is more as an exposition dump because we're led to believe by the writers that this character knows absolutely everything, while Indy doesn't. Like, they make it clear he knows some of the information being spouted to him already, so why they insist on having her be the mountain of information and knowledge is beyond me. Like, this wouldn't even be an issue if they treat Indy and her character as equals, but no, of course, she has to act better than him in every way, which is incredibly infuriating. She's written to have no redeemable qualities, oh what, because she does one good thing to get out of a sticky situation near the end of the movie, we're supposed to ignore how terribly written she was throughout the rest of the movie? No, it's not fucking warranted at all. There's also a kid in this movie who's obviously supposed to be this film's excuse for a short ride and stand in, but I mean, come on. You're not that guy. They missed the entire point of what made Short Round endearing. He was only annoying to Indy alone for most of Temple of Doom, but to us, he was charming. The kid in this movie is just a little shit and he even has less of an arc than Phoebe Waller-Bridge's character. I have no idea why the writers insisted on having this character in the movie. Oh yeah, my bad. It's to make you think of a dynamic that's done a lot better in a much better fucking movie. There's also a lot of wasted potential in this too. They bring Sal back with the sole purpose of nostalgia bait. Like, they could have swapped his character out with anyone from the other movies and his role would have sufficed just as well. But we need an iconic character to put in the trailer to make you people go see the movie, of course. Antonio Banderas is in this movie as well. I've no idea why, because he is barely in the movie and spoilers if you care, I suppose. I'd say five or ten minutes after he's introduced, he just gets killed off. What a great use of a talented actor. I think Bro needs to pick better movies because between this and Uncharted, his talent is being incredibly wasted. Just stick to the El Modivar movies and put some boots please. This film also feels way too long because it is and I don't think it warrants a runtime like this. Now I'm not one of those people who cares about runtime. I'm a firm believer that if you feel the need to tell your story to full potential, your movie can be as long as you want it to be. But only if, like I said, you use the story to its full potential, i.e. 
no fucking filler. This film, of course, just has some boring, slow points that don't do much to service actual character development or move the story forward. It just brings it to a slog, which is a shame, because the Indiana Jones movies are always exciting and fun. When this movie got to the third act, that's when it really pissed me off. These films are known for having supernatural-ish elements in them, but what this film does with its concept doesn't get too interesting. I suppose I need to get into spoilers again, so there's your warning. So the Dial of Destiny in question has the ability to take people back in time. The villain in this movie, played by Matt Mickelson, who of course is also wasted, his motives is to go back in time and kill Hitler so he can basically take Hitler's place because he thinks he could do a better job and win the war for Germany. When they revealed this, I just had to laugh because obviously it's such a dumb thing for the writers to go with. They're going back in time through this portal in the sky and before they actually go back in time, I thought to myself, if they go to dinosaur times, it would be so dumb. But what happens instead is so boring that I wish they went the stupid route. They go to this medieval time period because it has to service the story because it's around the time the creator of the Dial of Destiny is living in. What a surprise. They couldn't have taken a few detours first, maybe? I don't know. Also, they don't give the villains overly gruesome deaths like they do with the other movies. I guess if you consider yourself to be half Jewish, you'd think Nazis don't deserve a more violent death than if you're a full Jewish. Bit weird, bro. But whatever, I guess that's more the current rating system's fault, so nothing we could really do there, is there? This is undoubtedly such a disappointment. I was genuinely excited for this movie because I love the Indiana Jones franchise, and the idea they had, in theory, should have worked. But no, with Disney at the helm, of course, they couldn't help fuck it up. It's a low hanging fruit at this stage of course to say Disney has made another bad franchise installment because they don't care you know as long as they get money that's all that matters so get ready for the Disney Plus limited series of Phoebe Waller-Bridge's character taking over this new Indiana Jones in like the next few years folks. I'm sure it'll be interesting to follow that unlikable character through nine episodes. There's a lot of different ways that this movie genuinely could have had a really interesting story if maybe the writers had have known how successful Kihi Kwan was gonna end up being, they easily could have brought in his character to service some sort of point in this movie, but then again, I'm kind of glad that they didn't get a chance to do that, because if they had, he probably just would have been really wasted as well. I'm giving Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny one and a half stars, an unbearably boring, devoid of fun, quote-unquote, movie. It could have been so much better, but ultimately, it's just another cog in the Disney churn out of utter shit machine. Thank you, Disney, for fucking up a franchise and giving it an undeserved ending.